Today we're going to talk about the Browning Superpose. Uh, in this video we're going to cover the 12 gauges, we're going to cover the grades that were made, the years that they made them, production numbers, and uh, hope you enjoy the video. So John Moses Browning, being the genius that he was, uh, wants to come up with a cheap over or under for the American market. Uh, the guy is a firearm genius, everybody knows that. Uh, what he did was, and there's a super post receiver here, and there's your locking bolt. And the ingenious of this gun was a locking bolt came through at a much lower angle into the lugs on the barrel. The way this gun locked up, the bolt came into these lugs and it was a much different angle than most guns made that time and it was much stronger than anything on the market. That was the number one problem they had with these guns was wearing out the actions. But that's how he got around that by just changing the angle of the locking bolt. Now there was other things too. I think when he filed for the patent there was something like 68 improvements on it. Uh, oh, one of the other things that he did on the form, it's non-detachable. Take your thumb latch press it in, pull it out, pull your form towards the muzzle, take your top lever, push it over, and you'll see as it comes down, it comes apart. Push a little piece on the bottom before you push it back and uh, latch it down. So your form was non-detachable and that was an improvement with these guns. Uh, when these guns hit the market they were $107.50 and you could upgrade them to a vent rib for an extra 20 bucks. Uh, they were fantastic. The man really upped the game on the over-under market when he put these things together. And one of the reasons they came out with the cheap over and under was because at the time, the A5 semi-auto five shot, they were concerned about it being what they called a game exterminator. They thought it was so much firepower that they were gonna wipe out entire species with it. So John Moses Browning was actually concerned with that gun being outlawed, which is kind of ironic in today's market that they were talking about banning a semi-auto back in the 30s. But anyway, that's another subject. Uh, they made 291,000 of these guns. They're fantastic. The grade ones you can still buy fairly reasonable. Uh, Val Browning, his son, actually completed the gun. John Moses Browning invented it but it was Val Browning who actually refined the design and actually seen it into production and made all the improvements over the years. So even though it was his father's last legacy, it was Val Browning who actually completed the project. Well, we're gonna show you all the different grades and, and uh, give me just one second, we're gonna grab all those guns out and show them to you. So I walked around the shop and I found a few different grade guns that we have in here. I've got actually quite a few. Uh, let's jump back to the one that we're using for the video. That's a grade one. That's just your basic field model, plain wood, but still just fantastically well. I mean, uh, the mechanics to them are fantastic. Whether it's a grade one or, say, a Midas grade, they might be fancied up, but at least the internals, the quality of the craftsmanship that went into them on the mechanic side is the same. Now, below that, we have a pigeon grade. Two flushing birds on it, and this one just has really exceptional wood. And now here's quite a rare gun right here. This is in the works right now, but this is a four, this is actually a 410. I just grabbed the receiver out just for the purpose of the video, but it's a pointer grade, super light. See how the receiver is rounded right here? And if you go up and look at this pigeon, how it comes down to a point, they did this to relieve weight so it could live up to the name super light. But that's quite a rare gun. That's a grade three, AKA pointer. Below that, we have a grade four, and these are kind of few and far in between, but just by dumb luck, I had most of these in the shop at this time. Pretty wood, as you would think. And then below that, we have a Diana grade. And like I said, the mechanics of these guns are identical, it's just how they dress them up. Prettier wood, and then of course, more elaborate engraving. And we have a Midas grade in here. 
blued receiver, gold inlays. Now these, they did actually polish up the internals. They actually polished up the hammers on the inside of the receiver. Really, really went all out on these guns. Pretty wood to it like you would think. And now here's kind of a treat for you. This would have been special ordered. And this is actually a 20 gauge receiver, but for the point of the video, it shows you how elaborate they could go. If you had the money, Browning back in the day would make whatever your greedy heart wanted. And that's one of the neatest receivers I've seen in a while, actually. The amount of gold work on there is quite impressive. Well, those are all different grades, and there's a lot of them that I don't even have in here right now, but that gives you an idea of what's out there. Uh, let's jump over and I'll give you the years of production. So we've covered some of the history. Uh, we cover the models that they made, the different you know grades that they made. Uh, the last thing we're going to do is show you how to date your gun if you own one. So if you own a gun and you want to date it on a Browning 12 gauge super post, first thing you got to do is locate the serial number. And you don't have to do this. I'm just going to do it so I can show you a good close up on the camera when I pull the barrels off. But where you would find the serial number at is going to be underneath your top lever. Take it, slide it over, and that's where you're going to find your serial number. Now this is important. A lot of guys make the mistake of improperly dating their guns because they don't run the complete serial number. If you have 1, 2, 3, G, or, or S, or R, or anything, that's all part of the serial number, just not the first part. So whenever you're dating the gun, the first thing is to get the full thing. So here's what they did. In the very beginning production, starting in 1931, they were consecutively numbered. One, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. So from 31, and they did that all the way up until 62. So if you see just numbers and nothing else, no prefix, you know your gun was made between, on a superpose, 31 to 62 if it has no suffix after the serial number. If it has a suffix after the serial number, S2, S3, S4, they started doing that in 1962 and they continue that all the way up until 1976. So when you run your serial number, make sure you get the whole thing. Like I said, we get people who call us all the time. They're confused. They, it, they, it's, it's common issue. If I've seen it once, I've seen it a thousand times. Then after 76, they went to the Japanese style dating. In the middle of the serial number, you're gonna have two letters say like PP. P stands for eight, so it makes it a 1988. When I gave you the production numbers at the beginning of this video, that's not quite a accurate number. At the 291,000 mark, that's what they've made up until 1977. They still make a handful of these things. They're coming out of the custom shop at like 200 a year. There's not many of them, so that 291,000 is going to be fairly close to total production numbers, but that number changes every day. Um, they're still making them, and they're, out, they're, they're expensive, but you can still order one. Um, so I'm going to put up a serial chart so you can date your own guns. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's what I want to cover. If you have any questions, give us a phone call, shoot us an email, we'll get back with you. And thanks for watching.